September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Every year, more than 21,000 women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer in the U.S. And this year, a Brooklyn Center woman is using her makeup business to spread awareness for the cause. Nina Bupasavan has the story. When you think of makeup, yeah, it might just be for looks. But what if it's also for good? She wants to raise awareness. She wants to do more. I'm going to make sure that I put my effort and hard work into make sure that I can give back in some kind of way. And I said, create makeup for ovarian cancer. <laughs> for Monique Green of Malure Cosmetics, her heart and soul for all things beauty is inspired by her late mom. My mother really helped me understand who I was and also the values that I carried within our family and also within my mother. So I said, you know what, you're right, maybe I should push this and continue and it, it made a huge difference in my life. After losing her mom to ovarian cancer years ago, Green has kept her colorful childhood dreams alive one stroke at a time. This teal brush set from the Malure makeup line will help the Minnesota Ovarian Cancer Alliance. Proceeds from these brushes will help grow the cause. We are so grateful for Monique and this partnership with her cosmetic line and the donations um, from this cosmetic line are really helping us support women and um, families affected by the disease. A disease often missed or not diagnosed early enough. The more that we can get out the word and just share, um, you know, that there is no early detection test. We see people all the time and they don't know that. And so all of these key connections help us raise awareness about the disease so that women are diagnosed at an earlier stage stage when we know it's more treatable. A cause Green hopes will save more lives and enhance it as well, especially for women of color. My mom is the whole heart of what I'm doing, with, just not with ovarian, but with my makeup line as well. From that moment, she told me to keep going. Nina Bupasava on CCX News. Green is also donating a teal makeup bag for this year's annual MoCA Walk and Run event on September 18th. There will be a 2K walk, 5K run, and kids fun run along with live music, games, and entertainment for kids and families. The state has announced a new round of job creation fund grants, including a company that's expanding from California to Plymouth. Silk Road Medical will receive a $175,000 award from the state if it meets certain job hiring goals. The medical equipment manufacturer is leasing space southwest of I-494 and Rockford Road. It expects to add nearly 70 new jobs within the next two years. September is Meals on Wheels month. Local partners are using the month to spread awareness for the program and to ask for donations and volunteers. SEEP in Brooklyn Center coordinates the Meals on Wheels program and supplies meals to about 450 seniors in the northwest suburbs. This month they hope to raise $20,000 for the program. Organizers say it's a very important time to recruit not only money, but volunteers to check on the seniors who need the meals. It is such an important time for us, uh, mainly because winter's coming, as we know, and for our seniors, it becomes more of a difficult time just due to the pandemic, as we all know, uh, food insecurity, the roads, and of course, our winter months. We've got a link on our website if you are interested in volunteering. 22 firefighters from Minnesota have deployed to help bring relief to Louisiana after Hurricane Ida. Five of the firefighters are from the Plymouth Fire Department and two are from the West Metro Fire Department. The governor had to authorize the 18-day mission following a request from Louisiana. The agreement acts a lot like mutual aid between states. These first responders will provide coverage and protection while local firefighters get rest and clean up their damaged homes. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana on August 16th as the second most damaging storm to hit the state right next to Hurricane Katrina. This weekend, we are marking the 20th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attacks. The fire chief of Brooklyn Park was in New York City at Ground Zero shortly after the attacks. Back then, Chief John Cunningham worked for the fire department in Greenwich, Connecticut. In a story from our archives, reporter Pafua Yang sat down with the Brooklyn Park fire chief as he recalled his memories from that day. Personally, it's, it's a day of reflection. Um, it's not a day that I look forward to. Forever embedded in his mind and heart. I remember just rushing back to my dorm room and turning on you know, the news and watching it unfold. Brooklyn Park Fire Chief John Cunningham relives the sights and sounds of 9-11. There was a volunteer firefighter uh, about 35 minutes away 
um, in my hometown in Greenwich, which is right on the New York border. Cunningham rushed into the unknown along with several state troopers. I remember just that feeling that you know that you couldn't drive fast enough. Finally, in the midst of ground zero, the scene was nothing he could have prepared for. We were still um, hopeful that there we would find someone alive um, at ground zero. But as hours turned into days and days turned into weeks, no survivors were to be found. Cunningham lost 343 brothers and many more have since passed due to health effects from working at the collapse site. And you see that across every single day, you know, that firefighters, police officers, emergency uh, medical personnel, they run into danger when everyone else is trying to get out of it. And while the attacks left destruction. When September 12th hit, you know, our, our country changed. America became united. Thousands of people held signs of gratitude and love toward the heroes. I started to choke up and even thinking about it, it's, it's emotional. Cunningham recalls a kid yeah, hugging him and handing him a ribbon that said, who I am makes a difference. That was a profound moment because I realized that no matter what you do as a person, every small act of kindness and generosity makes a difference on the world. He says suddenly, all the differences in the world didn't matter anymore. We recognize that we have a lot more in common with each other than we do our differences. In Brooklyn Park, Pafu Yang. Never forgetting truly means never forgetting. CCX News. Chief Cunningham says he still keeps in touch with the firefighters he worked with at Ground Zero.